Well, hey, this is Rhonda Simmons, the founder and CEO of Rhonda L. Simmons, LLC, and the Simmons Empowerment Foundation Incorporated. I am so excited to be here with you another day, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Empowered Heart to Heart. You know, it's so good for us to be here, and uh, I've had some of the best interviews with folks from all over the globe, and I'm, I, I'm just so amazed that it's been almost two years that I've been on this podcast and I had no idea what I was doing two years ago. I just knew this is what I was supposed to be doing and I'd figure it out as I went along. And we have evolved over time uh, so that we provide a holistic approach to women's empowerment. That is why I love to say that we offer messages of hope, conversations that heal and interviews that empower. And today is no exception. But before we jump into our interview for today, I want to make sure that if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel with the same name, Empowered Heart to Heart, make sure that you like, comment, and share this video with somebody. Make sure you subscribe too and hit the notification button. That way you'll be sure to know every single time a new video is posted. And let me tell you, I'm on the move. I'm getting stuff done. And so you don't want to miss not one single episode. You hear? So make sure you like, comment, and share. Also, reach out to us on uh, social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And our handle is T-S-E-F-I-O-R-G. That's just the shortened version of the Simmons Empowerment Foundation Incorporated. So make sure you reach out to us uh, on any of those channels. You know, for the month of February, uh, we've been running a series called The Heart of the Matter. And uh, this is so near and dear to my heart because uh, there are two things being addressed this month. One is this is Heart Health Month, which is super duper important. Um, and also it's Black History Month. And so I wanted to address both of those uh, topics with uh, various speakers and, and uh, podcast guests. And so today's uh, guest is representing our Black History Month. And I am so excited to say that not only uh, is she African-American, but she is a female. And I say that because many times women are so underrepresented in so many different arenas. And I am so glad to have her with me today. I'm going to be interviewing uh, Miss Jawanda Jackson. I'm so excited about this because she uh, is a construction manager and works for a general contractor that builds multifamily projects such as market rate apartment complexes, affordable housing, senior living, and more. Who knows? She might be building uh, the very senior home I'll end up in in 20 to 30 years. <laughs> I'm just teasing, uh, but not about the 20 to 30 years part. <laughs> I'm not ready for a senior living yet, but I'll get there one day. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am so glad to introduce you to uh, my friend, Miss Jawanda Jackson. Hello, Jawanda. How are you? Hi, Rhonda. I'm pretty good. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Uh, I am super excited because I want to know, like I'm sure some of our viewers and listeners want to know, how did you choose construction management to get into it? What what was it about it that intrigued you so much? Uh, that's a great question. I, I would say I, I happened upon construction management in a way. Uh, when I was a girl, I thought I wanted to be an architect. And um, I, when I got to college, uh, I ended up studying something different, but found my way back to architecture. And I did an associate's degree in architectural technology. And then I got a scholarship to go and finish my bachelor's degree. And uh, I had a choice between like 14 schools and none of them had architecture. So I went on, because I wanted to take advantage of the free money, I went on to study uh, urban planning. And my plan was to do a master's in architecture. And between the, as I was finishing my bachelor's degree, I kind of 
got to a point where I was like, I don't know if it as well as I thought it did. And at some point, what I did was um, I talked with one of my advisors and he suggested construction management. And that's when I realized that what I thought I loved so much about architecture, which was seeing the buildings go up, was actually not architecture, it was construction, construction management. Um, so I looked at some programs and looked at some curriculum and I was like, oh my goodness, this is perfect. Uh, so I went on to do a master's in construction management at Michigan State University. And I guess you could say the rest was history. That is amazing. Wow. Wow. So you have a master's degree now and you are just representing us on so many different fronts and construction. I would have never thought of the management side of construction. When you say construction, I'm always thinking about people out there sweating and laboring and, and all of that. But uh, wow, what you do is amazing. Um, how hard has it been uh, to be in this field as a woman or even as an African-American woman? You know, I think I've just been really blessed in the sense that uh, I feel like I was born at a really great time for women and especially women of color. Uh, I feel like and and not even before like the whole diversity conversation that has been I guess, post-COVID, but I, I feel like I've been really blessed in that uh, when I was ready to start my career, um, it, it was the construction industry was changing and growing and evolving in a way that was more open to women and that was more of open to women that look like me or people that look like me in general. So I would say it, it's, been, it's been a really great, I've had really great experiences. Uh, I don't feel like I've experienced discrimination, uh, whether that's because I'm a woman of color or a woman in general. Um, I've, I've, I've been really fortunate to work with some really great groups and some really great managers. And uh, I don't think that my gender or my ethnicity um, has been, I know it hasn't been a disadvantage for me. So uh, I guess that's all I could say to that. I just, I'm just, I don't know. There's something about the the timing where I just feel like I've been really blessed. Wow, that's a wonderful, wonderful um, testimony, and I'm glad that you haven't encountered uh, the downside. Um, to and it's a shame that it e even is a downside, considering no one gets to choose their DNA or their gender or anything like that. And so uh, I'm glad you haven't experienced that. Um, one thing I do want to go back to that you mentioned that you just kind of kept on going. Um, you said that you won a scholarship. Yeah, that that's exciting. We got to pause and celebrate. Yes, I know it's the past, but we have to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, it, celebration. I do. I do. I do love celebrating. Uh, so that was a, actually a really, believe it or not, a really exciting time in my life. And the reason why I say believe it or not, because that was 2010, so 14 years ago. Uh, and it was exciting to, to get that scholarship. Um, I was really fortunate to be uh, a part of a program where they were, uh, it was, if it, the program focused on people that were in uh, careers that, or studying careers that were, um, I guess, different, where it was non-traditional for their gender. So I qualified in that way for that program. And they introduced me to the scholarship that was, uh, I believe it was called like a Board of Governor Scholarship. And it was for any of the Pennsylvania state-owned schools. And uh, it was really exciting to get that scholarship. I met some great people um, after getting that scholarship because it was for all of the community colleges in Pennsylvania. So um, the, we had uh, we got the scholarships, then we chose a school, and then we had a banquet. So um, at that banquet, I got to I met um, who was like my roommate for the next the next chapter of us going and finishing our bachelor's degrees. And we're still really, really close friends uh, to this day for that. But even uh, when I was in undergrad, 
I was in a program called the McNair Scholars, and that was a program that helped students prepare for grad school uh, with an objective of doing a PhD. I did not end up doing a PhD because it didn't really make sense for the construction industry. Uh, there are very few PhD programs, they exist, but you don't need a PhD to run a construction project. Um, so it wasn't something that I went on to pursue, but but I got, I was in the program to prepare for grad school. And when I got for, to grad school, um, I, I got a scholarship for three of the four semesters uh, that I was there and, and it was completely paid for. So yeah, it was, it was exciting to, to get funding and to be able to continue my educational, my higher educational journey. What a blessing. What a tremendous blessing. Absolutely. So, so what piece of advice now that you're 14 years or, or more or less uh, away from your, your college days, um, what piece of advice would you give to a young lady today who's considering entering uh, a non-traditional field? I would say to really get comfortable with the idea that, I don't know, that you have something valuable to bring to the table. And that I think for me, especially on a day-to-day -day when I'm in meetings or I am uh, on calls, I feel like, I felt like there's nothing I need to do to to stand out, to I feel like the fact that I'm in the room, um, I'm often the only woman in the room. I'm often also often the only person of color in the room, but I don't feel like I need to do anything to stand out. Yes, I feel like I need to serve my organizational my organization well, and I feel like um, I need to do my job well, but I don't feel like there's much I need to do to get attention because I'm a, I'm like the only woman in the room most of the time. But um, I I would say understand your value and that and understand that it's a good thing uh, that you bring value just because you're in the room because you have a different mindset or a different perspective than most of the rest of the group. And I would say. I would say be aggressive. One thing that was really helpful for me with regard to getting funding and and um, getting support was I was really aggressive uh, when I was looking for opportunities. I reached out to lots and lots and lots of people, even if it was something that was um, maybe frowned against or it was maybe annoying. Uh, for instance, when I got to Michigan State, uh, I didn't get any funding. They they didn't give me any funding. And I was coming from a, a bachelor's degree program where I had a 4.0. So I emailed every single dean in the whole university, which was like 20 different people. And I was like, <laughs> I was basically like, hey, I'm here and I need some funding. Like, And I'm sure that you guys have offered funding to people who decided to go elsewhere and that funding is just sitting around waiting for somebody to come along and I just got here. So, so I would say, and, and then I followed up for like probably four weeks into the semester and I got the funding that I asked for. It took a little while, but um, I would just say, don't be afraid to be aggressive and, and don't be afraid to get on people's radar when you feel like uh, you need support or there's an opportunity that you're interested in and and you just don't know how to how to get in the room or get heard. Um, I would just say be aggressive and and be annoying if you need to be to get to where you're going. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> so uh Jawanda, one of the um core values that we have at the Simmons Empowerment Foundation is in fact the word empowerment. Um, we love that word. We sleep, eat, and breathe that word. But what I'd like to know is what does the word empowerment mean to you? Hmm, that's a good question. When I think of empowerment, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, 
advocating, uh, maybe advocating for yourself or finding someone to advocate for you, uh, to support you in some way or to bolster you in some way. Uh, another thing that comes to mind is just this idea uh, of standing on other people's shoulders. Uh, and I think that ties into what I said earlier about just the timing that I've had with um, coming into my career. I, I absolutely understand that although I'd, I've never really expen experienced discrimination or uh, felt uncomfortable because I was different I look different than the other people in the room. I absolutely understand that that's not always been the case and that I'm standing on the shoulders of other women that have come before me. So I, I think there's a sense of empowerment there. Yes, I really do appreciate the fact um, that you are a pioneer, you know, a modern day pioneer um, and you're letting other women of color know that it can be done and look at your qualifications, um, not uh, your gender or your ethnicity um, as other people might look at it as a barrier that has nothing to do with your qualifications. And so there were some key words, uh, Jawanda, that you used that I really loved. You talked about knowing your value, um, knowing your worth. You talked about, um, how you didn't have to go out of your way to stand out because you already did. And so, and that that's pretty powerful. So when you walk into a room, you're not here um, to defend, you know, your, your gender or your color or anything like that. Here and, I am. And I this would say I'm, I'm also, I'm not a victim. Um, I, I don't, and I don't go around looking for handouts. I I, tr I work hard. I, I do my job. I try to do it well. But um, at no point I, have I had like a woe is me or I, I'm oppressed or, and and like I said, I I understand that I'm standing on the shoulders of many many people. But but um, I think it's there's something in a victim mindset that holds you back and doesn't allow you to see the forest for the trees, maybe. I love it. I love it. Well, Jawanda, it has been a pleasure hearing your story um, of determination and uh, uh, fortitude and tenacity. And I, <laughs> I must admit, when you were telling your story about um, emailing all of the deans, it made me think of a scripture that talks about uh, the woman and the unjust judge, how she kept going to the unjust judge. Yes. And finally said, you know, with less with her continual coming, she wearies me. <laughs> I'm going to give it to her. So I yes. think they must have gotten the idea you weren't going away. <laughs> That's yeah. and, and it paid off. I mean, that was like $30,000 that I would have had to come out of my pocket for if, if I hadn't been aggressive and if I just let them say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have any funding. It's like, no, you have funding and I just need you to look a little harder for it. So, but it was, it was, um, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you come off so unassuming, like you're quiet, not weak, just quiet. And, uh, but you are a force to be reckoned with. And I, I love that about you. And thank so you. thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate your time. And if you will just hang out uh, with me just for a few more moments, I'm going to wrap up the show and I'll be right with you. Okay. Thank you for having me. Glad you were able to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, that was just awesome. I have not met a construction manager before, let alone um, an African-American female construction manager. And so this was really cool and really phenomenal. I love um, Jawanda's fearlessness. You know, I, you, most of you who know me, you know, I'm all about scriptures and God and all of that. And it just reminded me, this interview reminded me of that scripture in Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so it's really exciting to know that Jawanda is living that scripture and she's not seeing anything as a barrier. Um, she's getting it done and she is uh, getting it done well. And so I'm glad to be able to celebrate 
uh, Black History Month with Dewanda Jackson. Make sure that you like, comment, and share this video with your friends because this was worth the replay. Let me tell you. Also, make sure that you bookmark us on uh, whichever podcast platform you're listening to us on because we do multiple uh, episodes every week and you don't want to miss any of them. And so I'm so glad that you're with me on this journey today. And so whatever you do, be blessed, be encouraged, but most of all, be empowered. And I'll see you on the next edition of Empowered Heart to Heart.